Practicing doesn't always have to be mundane and boring. What would you rather choose? Or this. Okay, so maybe you do want to be reading a book and watching a movie while practicing, but I would personally go with the second option. Not only is it less annoying to listen to, it's more creatively engaging. I will get into the strategy behind how to come up with something like that. And guess what? You're working on the same thing in both scenarios. What I'm doing is creatively repackaging my task. You can think of it in two parts. Number one, you have something you need to repeat in order to have it become effortless. And number two, you repackage it in a way that promotes repetition in a natural and engaging way. And you can do this by shifting some notes around, recomposing parts of it, adding notes to the end of it so that it becomes a loop that's more interesting and fun to play. I feel so strongly about this practice method because it allows you to repeat something many, many times without getting turned off by it. And that is so important. Even if you like this treadmill type of practicing, a lot of times I see musicians approach it in an overly athletic way. And sometimes this can lead to injuries because you're likely to be in a constant state of stress and tension and your body is full of adrenaline. Let's be honest, how many times have you just mindlessly practiced or maybe you counted the hours that you're practicing in a day or the number of repetitions that you're doing for a passage without putting much thought into exactly why you're doing this and how you're improving, what's difficult about it and putting critical thinking into this whole process in general. Okay, so can't you just take the original left hand and just repeat it? Yes, you can, but then you're not activating that part of your brain and your attention that's actively creating something. And that changes the dynamic of what you're doing. So even if it's just using one chord and you're just switching it up, that makes a difference. Why not add another one? By doing this, not only are you bringing something original to your practice, you are essentially creating a loop, which makes repetition much more natural and organic. It makes sense to listen to it over and over again. There are so many different options. Or if you're into improvisation, improvise over what you need to repeat. Of course, learning music, practicing, improving, all of that, it's very complex and it's not always about the quantity of work. But repetition is at the core of it because the goal when you're practicing is to imprint what you're doing so that you have a deeper understanding of the music and you're mastering certain physical movements needed to play it. To use an example, if you're trying to jump over a fence that is three feet, you probably need to be able to jump over a fence that is above three feet in order to handle that fence with ease. Okay, so now you may be saying, I am not a pianist, I don't have access to two parts, I can't just change the harmony in one hand. Well, in that case, I would still use this method because there are ways to change the notes slightly or add something to the end so that you're creating a natural loop. So let's say that you're working on a phrase like this. Instead of just repeating it over and over again, maybe add another measure to the end, which is sort of like a response. To me, I think this has a more natural momentum to it, which invites repetition, or... I just added these extra notes, D and C in this case, which act as a harmonic reference. So it feels like... except you're not playing the notes at the same time. So this is very possible on pretty much any instrument.
Here's another example with this passage. You can either repeat it over and over again or change the notes in the left hand. So a tip for this, choose two different chords or two different notes. Experiment with this. Even if you don't find something that you really like and it sounds really good, while you're looking for something, you are practicing whatever you need to be working on. So you really can't lose. As you're looking for stuff, you are practicing that phrase. So that is the most important part. And again, I want to emphasize that you don't need to know much about music theory. You don't have to be a composer. Just literally start with one note, random note, and see if it works, then move on to the next and just keep up this process. I assure you it will be a lot more interesting than just sitting there and doing that. By doing this, again, it has this natural circular motion and this momentum that makes it into this nice loop. What I really want to just emphasize is that practicing can be a very creative thing. It can be very enjoyable. It also requires problem solving and critical thinking. Really, I feel so strongly about it because I come from a place where a lot of things with piano technique and music in general didn't come natural to me. So I had to put in my hours and put in my work. And I'm also the type of person where if I don't find something interesting, I check out immediately. So I've struggled with this and this type of practice method has been a game changer for me. And I probably would have quit music if I didn't start practicing in this way. So. I hope this was helpful to you all. I hope you can incorporate it into your own practice routines. Let me know in the comments if you do try it or you've tried it before. And that is all. Thank you so much. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon and I will see you in the next video. Just kidding. <laughs>